What's up everybody out there in YouTube land? Rat2501 here? Alright, so this video looked interesting. Uh, this is what if SCPs were superheroes, lore and speed paint. So this guy actually turned some SCPs into superheroes and gave them some lore behind it. Kind of like an SCP readings kind of thing. And that just seemed really, really interesting to me. So apparently he's also done some other stuff. Like, I mean, this is just part one because uh, there's a part two. And uh, he has other things, like if cryptids were giant monsters, uh, you know, other characters were dragons, you know, stuff like that. If Pokemon were, ka were kaiju, holy shit, that's kind of cool. Anyway, some of them actually are. Anyway, excuse me. So this is by Pop Cross Studios. So let's see what he's got here. And go. Oh, you've done it. After the last Popcrass Community Redraw episode, what the hell? in which I read that Jar Jar? Six Eight Two as a Transformer submitted by Brock. Oh Bell, wow, with that's actually kind of cool. Suggesting it, I finally started looking into SCPs, and I very quickly got hooked. Which I'm sure <laughs> none of you are surprised by. Yeah, there's, there's some a collection a... of lore and stories. There's a bunch of animation channels out now. And entities, and you know that's not far from how I describe this. There's game. literally thousands of them. A bit more pop culture and take out what some the of the Among Us. Vibes. Oh my god! So, anyway, finally doing that's an cool. SCP video, maybe the first of many. So I thought I should start with a pop cross classic. Oh, that's and turn neat. Some of my favorites into superheroes. Let's ah. go. <laughs> nine, nine, Hit nine. like if you want. Okay, this is cool. If you feel like, but either way, enjoy the show. Let's see how this. Let's see how this Today turns was out. the first day of my promotion to level two security clearance at the Superhero Corrections and Placement Foundation. What? Here we work to register and keep tabs on SCP, every like powered that. being around the world. If they get too violent or need to be reprimanded, we're there. And if their abilities could be better used in another territory, we see about their relocation. And, on occasion, if a hero needs to be silenced or handled, we'll be the ones to carry out the task. Uh -huh. Getting to level 2 means I finally have access to many of our case files on most of the heroes we've registered. And as part of my day one initiation, I had to go through as many of the folders as possible to familiarize myself with who's out there. Here are some of the cases that stood out to me as some of the most incredible and the most dangerous. Hero case 173 <laughs> is Swift Sculpt. We've had to call him Swift in Sculpt. many times to try and settle his murderous tendencies. Villains almost never escape him, but that's because, in most cases, when he gets a chance, he'll slay his prey instead of arresting them. Sculpt's main ability huh. is super speed, near unmatched by any other being, but he can only use his power when nobody is looking directly at him. Because of this, he'll predominantly take on cases involving three or fewer culprits. He has gone in against more targets, but in those cases he'll attempt to make quick work of the criminals so they don't have a chance to all look at him simultaneously huh. and consistently depower him. But Interesting even coloring in cases too. where he's been caught with many people staring at him, he's still not easy to beat. Even when his speed is paused, he still has incredibly tough skin that's formed from a biological material that resembles concrete and rebar. Bullets yeah. and blades don't seem to affect him in the slightest, and sometimes he'll use this to intimidate foes, allowing them to riddle him with gunfire to show how invulnerable he is. This is all well and good, but it's Damn, our this is pretty job good. to ensure that heroes are apprehending criminals for proper trial. Because of Sculpt's tendency to snap the necks of his victims, snap we neck, classified yeah. him as a Euclid tier hero, meaning he'll do consistent hero work, but isn't reliable when it comes to properly following hero directives. Registered heroes are allowed to be cold, but never cruel, and 173 far too often goes for the latter. That's the thing for the SCP, too. personality rehabilitation may be required eventually, but for now we'll simply be keeping an eye on him and his exploits. That's pretty cool. Give us an interesting backstory. He's a hero, but not really. Kind of like an anti-hero. next case is a breath of fresh <laughs> air for anyone there he charged is. with watching over her. Hero Case 999 is possibly the huh. most upstanding hero in the Foundation's registry. The hero called L8 on the surface appears to have the ability to transform the shape of her body as an amorphous orange blob, but there is so much more to her than just that. She has almost never had to orange. fight the criminal for more than a moment because as soon as she touches a target, or anyone for that matter, an elated sense of euphoria overwhelms them, and whatever Drugs. is causing them to commit a crime seems to totally fade from their mind. She's then able to talk to the criminals and find out why they've turned to crime, and convince them to turn themselves in. 
Once she's done this, in many cases, Elle will do what she can to ensure a shortened sentence for the criminal and mm. counsel them after they've been arrested to help make them genuinely better people. Because of the incredible positivity of her power, we've brought her in to work as a therapist with some of our worst offenders to try and help them be better heroes. She's been instrumental in our work and has even managed to get through, at least briefly, to one of our toughest cases. A quote unquote hero who's well above my pay grade to deal with. Hero 682 is a violent vigilante that will kill criminals <laughs> for even the pettiest crimes. He's gotten Damn. so bad that the Foundation has even hired other heroes to try and slay him, but none have succeeded. So nope. far as we know, he's completely unkillable. Early in her heroing days, Elate was sent to meet him, and while he was hostile at first, she managed to get a hand on his shoulder, and from there her powers kicked in, and she was able to carry on a conversation about his past and his hopes and his desires. It was the first time hmm. anyone had seen him happy in all our time surveilling 682. In an unorthodox twist, she even started tickling him at one point, and instead of lashing out as we expected, he laughed and seemed to enjoy it. It was a baffling moment for all who witnessed it. Unfortunately, not long after their encounter, 682 went back to his vicious ways, but at least it gave us all some hope to see him temporarily turned. I've heard rumors that the origins of L8's powers come from a particularly horrifying lineage, but the parental <laughs> details have been redacted from all documents that people with Child of the level Scarlet two King privy to. To get that information, I may have to wait until the day I can rise through the ranks and reach security level 5. If that day ever comes. That it is. won't. I'm kind of curious about some other SCPs. Some of the more abstract ones, like the Factory or the Gate Guardian. Or even the Scarlet King. The next case is actually a team of heroes, all from the same family, who all have the same genetic abilities. Hero Case 939 are a group referred to as the Endo Hound Gang. Not very heroic sounding, and unfortunately, it fits their M.O. This group is notorious for ruthlessly killing their targets, and if any escape their so-called justice, they have a way of hunting down their escapees. But more on that in a moment. Their core abilities are like that of a powerful hunting animal, with the caveat that every member of the group is blind. They rely on their keen, enhanced hearing and smell, along with their extra sense to detect changes in airflow. To they multiply like the SCP, that's crazy as fuck. Them. They often work in small groups. A few members of the family will go out on nightly patrols together. The small towns they often patrol rarely get any particularly dangerous villains, but even when they do, the Endo Hounds will never stand down from a fight. As mentioned, there will be a few occasions where one or a few criminals get away from them, but this is when their secondary powers kick in. Now, you may have heard the old adage that criminals always return to the scene of the crime, but the Endo Hound Gang guarantees that this will be true for their huh. foes. When in a fight against a criminal, the members of the family will emit an imperceptible amnestic gas, which will result in any escaped criminals completely forgetting that they even committed a crime, generally only recalling that they'd planned to do so. Thereafter, they'll be compelled to go and scope out the location of the coming heist that they'll think they still have to commit, and as soon as they do, the hounds will be there waiting to descend on their unsuspecting prey. Many members of the family have That's been actually a pretty cool twist on it. for psychiatric evaluation, but it's hard to determine which ones are responsible for killing criminals, as they'll always defend one another and never give up any needed information. There have yeah. been cases in which we've had to handle members of the Endo Hound game, mm -hmm. and while we are subtle in our exploits, they highly suspect the Foundation of killing off some of their ranks, meaning our relationship with the family is tenuous at best. That's kind of cool. Now this these, next these are really one that I oh shit. Not okay, that's a weird to. one. Somehow, a grave error in mismanagement had allowed a security level five document to get mixed in with the level two folders. Upon realizing what I'd found, I promptly took the folder to a higher authority, but I had already read some of the files. I assume they'd request to wipe my mind of the file, but because of my quick action to return it, and my history of extreme loyalty, they allowed me to keep the information I'd read in my Ow. mind. Though, it honestly wouldn't surprise me to wake up tomorrow with no memory of reading the file of this near-godly hero, Case 3000. 
I'd always assumed <laughs> heroes this powerful and everlasting existed, but never had any proof until I read the papers we had on Serpentia. He's an aquatic hero who's lived for centuries, guarding the waters of the Bay of Bengal in the northeastern Indian Ocean. International waters may be a lawless stretch of the world, but Serpentia makes sure that the peace is kept and justice is served in his home. So far as we can tell, he is unkillable. That's cool. We've never had reason to test weaponry against him, but from the litany of guns, blades, and even cannons that have been used against him, we can safely say that no conventional weapons hurt this hero. When he boards a vessel with targets that he deems unlawful, he won't strike out or... Oh, he's holding the, that goo that no, thinks secretes. he very likely could. Instead, he systematically hurls a black liquid that he secretes from his hands at the criminals, which causes mass confusion and this terror. This is cool, With his man. glowing, he'll leer into the minds of his prey, unspeaking and yet somehow getting across the idea that they should never commit any unjust act or else fall victim to endless mental anguish. To study oh, oh, oh. the exact effects of Serpentia's powers, we sent a small vessel he full of our own class of <laughs> workers to his waters. Class D are death row inmates that we temporarily employ to give heroes under our watch live foes to train against, as their powers live are Live fodder. In this case, we were simply using them to gather information. Their vessel was quickly boarded by Serpentia. After all of them were splashed with the goop and sufficiently intimidated, yeah. he left. From tracking their actions over the next few weeks and doing daily interviews, we found that any time a thought crossed their minds that could lead them to cause harm to another human or creature, they would see the horrifying eyes of Serpentia in their mind, and if they didn't oh. quickly suppress their ill intent, they'd be driven irreversibly insane. Serpentia's tactics certainly border on cruel, but he isn't outright killing anyone, and so long as his victims lead an upstanding life, they'll be fine so long as. with him. Because of this, we leave him be, to do his work in peace. But seeing his files... And you can't do anything about him thinking, anyway. If he's just one of the possibly hundreds of files that I don't have the authorization to read, uh, what uh, other uh. impossibly powerful beings might be... Now I'm curious. I'm world. really curious, man. This is getting intense. Yeah, the artwork is this awesome too. This episode was really fun to make. I mean, oh okay, the that's it. Only on four, huh? Fun to make, but this oh, one yeah. was kind of next level because I feel like I just rediscovered what the hell Ben Ten or Pokemon or something <laughs> in terms of having a whole new universe of creatures and beings that I can pull from to adapt into different art and stories. I would love to get some more SCP suggestions from people that know SCPs better than I do in the comments, like more specific creature and monster kinds of ones. Yeah, probably gonna do him. Kinds of things to adapt. Well, he's Not like on the cover of the next video, as, so you know, focused around really messed up stuff for torture things like that those aren't as much fun to me and this channel is fairly pg so i probably what the hell that's that awesome anyway oh that's, and that's cool a fair too. Warning to anyone out there who watched this and didn't know scps before and might be wanting to get into it there are tons of really awesome interesting ones but there are also some you know really very r-rated kinds of ones so you yeah know, viewer discretion is advised kind of thing personally yes. i think a good place to start is a channel that some of the ones he was talking about are very r-rated images in like this, this video. thing they're called scp explained story and animation and they're the channel that i've been watching the most over the last few weeks i'll link their four videos on the four <laughs> creatures that i was working with in the animation this on there isn't spectacular but a understanding the stories are the readings are, are pretty good like. Also, I'll link the original wiki pages for all these SCPs as well. But anyway, if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this, I've got lots of videos like this. I recently oh, that's made neat. famous Oh, that's and cool. Designed them into the Suicide Squad. The Suicide I've done Squad. A story with Greek demigods if they were in a post-apocalypse. Oh, that's cool. I recently did cryptids as kaiju. Tons nice. of cool crossover stories and artwork. Ah, and stuff. But anyway, red. Everybody, that's all. I mean, it's green I'm from uh, Pearson, this Among Us. Green Among Us. I wonder what the red, red Among Us on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed your Marvel we'll Combat. Next video oh my God. All right, so yeah, that was actually pretty badass. So subscription from me, boom, pop, pop cross studios, and I definitely recommend you guys click on the link to the original down description, get down to his channel, and give him a like and sub to him because that was amazing. He's got some good lore. The artwork is really badass, and like I'm like, man, I want to start seeing like comics of this shit. This looks awesome. Excuse me. So, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, of course. And uh, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. I will see you guys next time. Tune in every day for new content. Bye-bye.